Starlink is yet another ambitious Elon Musk venture. It allows access to a stable internet connection no matter where you are. But does it pose a threat to astronomy? Let's find out. With Starlink, people can engage in activities that historically have not been possible with satellite internet before. Normally, people using satellite internet couldn't play online games or make video calls because the latency would be too high. This service is made possible via the world's largest constellation of satellites operating in a low orbit around the Earth. And that's where the concerns begin. Astronomers need to have clear visibility of space to study emerging phenomena. But if companies start cluttering low Earth orbit with satellites in large numbers, the view is obscured. This angers a lot of scientists and also increases the risk of inaccurate readings. A study revealed that a prime ground-based observatory that scans the sky for exploding stars and dangerous near-Earth asteroids is struggling with disruptive light streaks from SpaceX's Starlink Internet Satellite Constellation. The observatory, called the Zwicky Transient Facility, ZTF, opened its telescope eye in California in 2017. Scanning the entire sky every two days, the observatory looks for the temporary brightening or sudden appearance of objects that remain visible only briefly. It hunts for supernova explosions of dying stars and asteroids passing close to Earth. A review of its observations going back to 2019, the year when SpaceX began launching its ambitious Starlink mega constellation, has revealed that a considerable percentage of the telescope's views has streaks in it caused by the satellites as they passed overhead. Images capturing the twilight sky around sunrise and sunset are the most affected, the team behind the study said in a statement. These observations are particularly important for spotting potentially dangerous asteroids coming from the direction of the sun, the scientists added. The ratio of affected twilight images has risen steeply with the growth of the Starlink mega constellation, from only 0.5% in late 2019 to 20% in late 2021. But only around 4,000 of SpaceX's envisioned constellation of 12,000 satellites are currently in orbit, suggesting the ultimate impact will be much larger. Moreover, SpaceX hopes to eventually expand the size of its satellite fleet to a whopping 42,000. And there are other companies with similar plans including OneWeb, Amazon, or China's SatNet. We don't expect Starlink satellites to affect non-twilight images, but if the satellite constellation of other companies goes into higher orbits, this could cause problems for non-twilight observations. Presmek Mraz, the leading author of the study and former postdoctoral scholar at California Institute of Technology, which runs ZTF, said in the statement. Not everything is doom and gloom, however. Caltech physics professor Tom Prince, a co-author of the study, added that only about 0.1% of pixels in an image are damaged by the streak. There is a small chance that we would miss an asteroid or another event hidden behind a satellite streak. But compared to the impact of weather, such as a cloudy sky, these are rather small effects for ZTF, he said in the statement. So is Starlink doing anything to mitigate these issues? Yes, they are. SpaceX will soon launch a new generation of satellites that are larger and more capable than earlier generations. They call these satellites V2, and there will be two separate versions of the satellite design. One that is compatible with the Falcon 9 launch vehicle, and one that is compatible with the Starship launch vehicle. When they launch V2 satellites on Falcon 9, they won't be the full-size version that are designed to be launched on Starship. The V2 satellites launched on Falcon 9 are a bit smaller, so they refer to them as V2 mini satellites. But don't let the name fool you. A V2 mini satellite has four times the capacity for serving users compared to its early counterparts. As they begin to deploy the Gen 2 network, SpaceX will ensure that no debris remains in space longer than five years should a satellite become non-maneuverable. In their own words, SpaceX adheres to and significantly exceeds any applicable requirements or industry best practices and operates with full transparency even going beyond what is required by US regulations. SpaceX's space safety approach includes many elements that greatly enhance sustainability. They're not lying, they've taken a lot of precautions. Like their design and build reliability, SpaceX satellites are designed and built with high reliability, around 99% after the deployment of nearly 4,000 satellites. They also operate at lower altitudes. SpaceX has chosen to operate the vast majority of their satellites at an altitude below 600 kilometers. At these altitudes, objects will decay and re-enter due to atmospheric drag within a short period of time in rare off-nominal scenarios, eliminating the risk of persistent orbital debris. Deployment into low insertion orbit below space stations helps as well. At these low altitudes below 400 kilometers, any SpaceX satellites that do not pass initial system checkouts are quickly deorbited actively or by atmospheric drag. And the most impressive one would be the advanced collision avoidance systems that protect SpaceX and other satellites. SpaceX satellites utilize an autonomous collision avoidance system that ensures spacecraft have the most up-to-date information to mitigate close approaches with tracked objects including debris and active satellites. 
launched SpaceX's Autonomous Collision Avoidance System has been scrutinized by NASA's Conjunction Assessment and Risk Analysis CARA program, which deemed it sufficiently trustworthy to rely on to avoid collisions with NASA spacecraft. These satellites are also propulsively deorbited within weeks of spacecraft end of mission. This vastly exceeds the international standard of 25 years. At end of life, SpaceX satellites are designed to fully demise upon atmospheric re-entry, eliminating the risk of falling debris. SpaceX has also prioritized collaboration with astronomers and scientists to mitigate the impact of Starlink satellite streaks on their observations. For the Gen 1 network, SpaceX proactively requested two license modifications from the FCC to reflect two different deployment phases to lower the operating altitude of the satellites. These modifications were a crucial mitigation for astronomers and one endorsed by the American Astronomical Society to reduce impacts on astronomy, as well as improve space safety with respect to orbital debris mitigation. More recently, the National Science Foundation and SpaceX announced an updated coordination agreement to protect astronomy and continue collaboration on mitigation practices. Initially, for example, SpaceX experimented with a dark paint to absorb sunlight. But when in-space experiments showed this mitigation was less effective than desired, SpaceX pivoted to development of a visor, VisorSat, to block sunlight from hitting the satellite and reflecting back to the Earth. SpaceX also implemented flight configuration changes to minimize the surface area of the spacecraft from which a reflection could result, both highly effective mitigations. SpaceX continues development with additional technologies, including a combination of dielectric mirror film, which reflects sunlight away from the Earth, and the SpaceX developed low reflectivity black paint, which reduces lower specular peak by a factor of five compared to the darkest available space stable paint. These improvements are implemented on the V2 satellites. So while the V2 mini satellites are larger than earlier versions, they're expecting them to be as dark or darker once the full range of mitigations are implemented and the satellites reach their operational orbit. However, we should emphasize that even though brightness component measurements, ground modeling, and analysis show effective brightness mitigations, we won't know the full efficacy of their efforts until on-orbit observations are made of the satellites and data is collected and analyzed. These V2 mini satellites may be somewhat bright initially, especially during orbit raising and initial operations, so we'll have to wait and see. In the end, it seems like Starlink isn't posting any imminent threat to space and astronomy. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.